Hello guys, it's Toronto Brett, and um, it's Friday morning, so happy Friday everybody, and welcome to the stream. Today we're going to be talking about the Thailand and Philippines genre, the biggest streamer. Who's your favorite passport bro, you know what I mean? All of this kind of stuff I'm going to be talking about today, and um, we're going to do a few streams today. Today is going to be stream day. That's what I'm going to say. So anybody tuning in, just be tuned into Toronto Brad today because we're going to be streaming all over the city of Toronto. So um, this morning I'm going to have to go to North York Center. So I'll do a stream from North York Center. I got to run some errands there. And then I'm gonna head down to um, I'm gonna head down to um, the Union Station later on in the evening, so I'll do another stream from there as well. I can only do an hour stream, so maybe I'll do a two-hour stream in North York and a one-hour stream in uh, Union Station. Um, yeah, so basically we're gonna be talking about the Thailand genre, and we are all part of the community, the Thailand genre community. We all like to travel to the Philippines. We all like to travel to. Uh, to Thailand, Southeast Asia, and we also like to watch the YouTube. So, uh, yes, travel, learn, repeat. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the chat, guys. Thank you for tuning in. So, basically, I just wanted to discuss, you know, who's the, who's the best streamer? Who's your favorite streamer? Is it Ricky Drama? Is it Be More Ron? You know... Is it um, Cheap Charlie, Jeff Lepard, you know? You know, everybody has their own favorite streamer in the Thailand genre that they like to watch. So I think for me personally, obviously, I enjoy when Cheap Charlie is in Thailand. You know, that's the streams that I always, uh, I always am um, looking forward to. I like when Ricky Drama is living the five star lifestyle i enjoy watching those stream when you got a nice hotel and it's a resort you know pool and all this and that that's what i'm that's what i'm that's what i like man i like those types of um of uh stream streamers you know those are my favorite types of streams to watch um i like jeff lebard when he went to bangkok and he was in sukhumvit you know what's going on? JK is in the house, man. Um, yeah, so those are the streams that I was like, man, this stuff is so good, man. Actually, any Sukhumvit stream, I'm down for any Sukhumvit stream. Now, obviously, it's a little bit difficult to film on Sukhumvit because it's a nightlife district, you know, but you can still do it, man. You can still do it. I saw a Wanderer Nirvana filmed on Sukhumvit, and I saw his Korean friends film on Sukhumvit. It's not hard, but can you imagine... You know, you can go down Sukhumvit and jump into the bars, you know, but you can't. Obviously, on Nana might be a bit tricky, but yeah, man. These are things that, you know, um, I like to watch when I'm watching my YouTube, man. So I'm a big, I'm big on the, um, uh, yeah, the Thailand streamers, man, and uh, watching them and doing their thing, man. So basically, I've been to I've been to Thailand, and uh, but I never did any. I don't think I ever did any live streaming in Thailand. I think when when I was in Thailand, at that time, because my channel wasn't big enough, I don't think I had the ability to go live. So the last time when I was in Thailand, I was with uh, Cheap Charlie. I didn't have the ability to go live, so I couldn't go live in Bangkok. I couldn't go live in Pattaya. But Cheap Charlie could, so Cheap Charlie went live, and so I was on the uh, Cheap Charlie streams. And um, that was when we, I was like, wow, this is amazing. I remember we went out to the uh, the CX bar, which was on uh, Soy Made in Thailand, and uh, Rissa was there, I think Juan was there. I, I don't know, no one wasn't there, but Blondie was there. Remember Blondie? That's the one. Uh, Blondie was the one that uh, when Steph, before Steph became an invalid, <laughs> Before Steph became an invalid, he used to go to Thailand. <laughs> but now, uh, Steph, uh, Steph Traveler is an invalid. He can't travel. He can't walk. He has to stay at his house all the time. So um, he used to go to Thailand. When he used to go to Thailand, he used to hang out with Blondie. 
And uh, so Blondie was there, and Blondie is this really, like, tall, sexy um, Thailand lady. And uh, so I was hanging out with her. And then I think after I left, she met another guy, and she was just going hardcore on that guy. She was just trying to, oh, man, she was going crazy on that guy. I remember that so much, man. And I met E and uh, I met Quan and Arissa, and I still uh, I still hang out with those guys online, but I don't actually, I haven't, because I haven't been to Thailand, I haven't met up with them. But Arissa and Quan are cool. Arissa's doing well, and uh, all those guys are doing well with the, the, the bar scene now. They think they all have their own bars now, pretty much, right? They all have their own bars. When I went there, they were all working for one, and now they all have their own bars really successful, you know? There it do prefer Pinay or Thai? I don't know. I think uh, uh, Pinay's are, they're more loyal. Thai's are more about um, getting income from you. Pinay's more loyal. <laughs> but I guess uh, it depends on the scenario. <laughs> so it depends on the scenario. So yeah, so at that time when I was there, there was no, um, there was no live streaming. So I couldn't do any live streaming at that time, you know? And um, at that, and then what I did is um, um, when I came back to Canada, I said, okay, maybe next time when I go overseas, I'll I'll have a, like a little channel so I can stream, I can talk to you guys, and then you guys can participate in my vacation. I was big in the online chats at that time. I used to go to a bury the bosses chat, uh, so I used to go to bury the bosses chat. Yo, what is this, Chris Travels? Chris Travels, flip beans, what's going down, Chris Travels, anyways, um, so at that time, I said, okay, well, next time I travel, I said, I was, well, first, before I even did that, I was going in the, the, the chats, so I would go into Barry the Boss's chat, I would go in Cheap Charlie's chat, and I would chat with everybody, and so we became all kind of friends and everything like that, yo, what's going on, man, big ups, man, what's going on, what's, Clayton Bigsby, all these, man, I got all these guys in my chat, man, wow, all right, guys, so yeah, usually my stream is a small stream, I don't usually have, you forgot about Fat Bear, <laughs> you're good, I forgot about Fat Bear, <laughs> well, does Fat Berry go to, does Fat Berry go to uh, Thailand, I don't, I don't think he goes to Thailand, I don't think you consider yourself the best Thailand streamer, unless you actually go to Thailand. I think that's a requirement for being in the Thailand genre. You need to go to Thailand. And I don't think uh, Barry the Boss, he doesn't go to Thailand, so you can't put him in the best streamers in the Thailand genre if you don't actually go to Thailand, you know. So even when I was in Thailand, when I went to Thailand with uh, Cheap Charlie, we were, we were like, hey, we saw Barry in the chat. That was like, that's now it's closing in on six years ago, man. And we saw Barry the Boss in the chat. And we're like, hey, Barry the boss. And he was like, always talking about Thailand. And we're like, Barry, when you come to Thailand? That was six years ago, man. Come on, man. Give me a break. You know, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's some point, something's got to give. Something has got to give. Either you're, if you're going to say you're in the Thailand genre, you got to at least come to Thailand, man. So I can't say that Barry is somebody that's going to be in the Thailand genre if you don't come to Thailand, man. So, you know, he's, just, he's not, man, you know, and he did a little one-week trip to Philippines, come on, man, get, get real, man, homie, he goes to, he's not even going to Thailand, he's going to uh, Brazil, or he goes to Dominican Republic, he's going everywhere else except Thailand, <laughs> he's going everywhere else, he's going everywhere else except Thailand, man, so how can you say you're in the Thailand genre. You don't even go to Thailand, guys. So, yeah, he's not on the list of the, the biggest streamers. So the biggest streamers would be guys that get big, big, big um, followings in the chat when they go live in Thailand. So that'd be like Jeff Lepard. It's got to be the big one. Cheap Charlie, man. He's he's a big one. Be More Ron is going to be a big one. You know, um, who's that guy? What's up, Pattaya? Pattaya, uh, John555, these guys all get a lot of people in their chat, man. So what's up, man? He stays off politics. He's He stays off politics, man. <laughs> I love politics, you know, that's my problem, right? Travel, that's all you're telling me there, right? Because I, 
I usually diverge into politics, man. I, you know, I obviously, um, I, I can't help myself sometimes with the politics, man. I get into politics big time. So I, uh, you know, we got a lot of corruption going on right now. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I can't help it with politics, man. Scott Milan? Oh, yeah, Scott Milan. I never even heard of him. So you guys are giving me some streamers I never even heard of. I'm going to Google him up right now and uh, let's see what he's all about. If he's a good streamer, he's in Thailand, I'm going to add him in, man. I like people that go to the bars and have a lot of nice, um, like a granny type lady on the stream. Then, um... Then I'm down with that, man. Scott Milan. Give me one second. Thailand, right? Is he in Thailand now? I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. There he is. He's in Thailand. Wow. Okay, man. Wow. Does he do live streams? Let me check and see if he does. Um, thank you for giving me that one, man. I never even knew this guy. Does he go live? Yeah, he goes live. Yeah, man. Wow. All right, man. Actually, no, I did go into his chat before. I did go into his chat, but I never subscribed, so I just subscribed now, man. Who's the next YouTube star? Would, who's there, man? <laughs> Are you a rival of Barry? Do you and Barry have animosity for each other? <laughs> so, so you're saying your favorite stream is a <laughs> Um... No, I don't have any animosity toward Barry. I'm, I'm not in the Thailand. I, I, I'm, I'm not in the, um, the Thailand genre. I'm, I, I, I haven't been to Thailand in five years, man. So I can't even say I'm in the Thailand genre. You know, I, I, um, I just follow it. I like to chat with the guys in the Thailand genre. We talk. We plan trips. We planned a trip to the Philippines a couple times. Maybe next time we'll plan a trip to the uh, to Thailand. Are you the king of the granny genre? <laughs> will I expand my... <laughs> yeah. Will you expand your uh, granny travels to South America? Yeah, maybe I will. Uh, like Colombia or uh, Dominican. Maybe, man. Sir Toronto bread. Yes, Rice. What's going on, man? Rice Shout out to you, man. Thank you for coming into the chat. We're talking about the Philippines and Thailand genre. We're talking about the biggest streamers. Those guys that have the biggest following. So obviously in our genre, the biggest guys that have the biggest uh, online chat is going to be in order. It would be, um, I would say, Cheap Charlie has around 300 in chat. And he goes, when he's in Thailand, he's getting 300, 400, sometimes 500 in chat. Cheap Charlie. So Cheap Charlie is without a doubt. Um, and number one, uh, <laughs> is China on my bucket list? No, I'm not. Well... I would like to go to China, but I need to have a lot of free time, and I would have to have a lot of money. I'm not going to China on a vacation. It would be like if I'm strictly um, a traveler full-time, then I would go to China. But if I'm just going on vacation, no, I would just say I wouldn't go to China. I would go to Hong Kong, which is technically China. I would go to Hong Kong because I've always wanted to go to Hong Kong, and I don't have to deal with the visa. When you go to Hong Kong, you can just fly in. You don't need a visa or nothing like that. And that's still China, and a lot of people will do that. That's one way to experience China without going to actual China. Now, I don't know if from Hong Kong you're able to obtain the visa to go into the mainland China, but you can definitely go from Hong Kong to Macau. Um, you know, but um, but uh, yeah, Maximus, what's going on? Yeah, we're live, Maximus. We're just talking about the biggest streamers in the Thailand and Philippines drama. I think we have it cracked out to be number one streamer is easily Cheap Charlie. So I've seen Cheap Charlie over 500 to be in chat. But Cheap Charlie roughly 300, 400 in chat when, he, when he's in Thailand, not when he's in, in the Appalachian Mountains, right? And then um, the next one be, would be Jeff Lepard, man. Jeff Lepard, he's, he's not, he lives not too far away from me. He lives just down the street here. and I think he lives in Ajax or Whitby or something like that. And he goes to Thailand, he gets like 250 in the chat. You know, yo, Baron Badger, what's up, homie? What's up, homie? Yeah, we're just talking about the, the biggest streamers in the Thailand genre. We're talking about those guys that get those big, you know, those big streaming numbers. When they're in Thailand, like when those guys are in Thailand, their numbers are really high, you know, and they get a lot of people in the chat. The chat's wild. There's some drinking. There's a lot of Thailand ladies, this and that. 
these are the guys that we look up to, like Ricky Drama, Five Star Lifestyle, you know, Cheap Charlie, Jeff Lepard. Those are guys I like when I when I'm doing when I'm watching streaming, and I've even gone into. I've met Jeff many times. I've been on Jeff's lives, but not in Thailand, I'll just have, but in Canada. Yeah, Baron Badger, what's up, man? When is Cheap Charlie starting his hike? Uh, it's supposed to be this month. Yeah, I've been keeping tabs on it. You know, I'm not really big on Appalachian Mountains, you know. Like, the Appalachian Mountains probably the last place in the United States I would even go. First of all, I wouldn't even really, I don't even really want to go to the United States. I only go to the United States if my flight has to go through the U.S. and then I'm a, I would do a stopover, like when I was in San Francisco. Like, that's okay, you know, you get, because when you go through the U.S. airport, you got to go through immigration anyway, so you might as well, you might as well do a, like, a quick, uh, do a quick tour and anything like that, because anytime you pass through a U.S. airport, you got to pass through their uh, security screening, so you might as well, you have access to the country, you might as well go visit if you're, um, if you're doing a stopover, if you have a long stopover, like 14, 15 hours, you can go and visit the, the city, um, um, so, uh, yeah, you can definitely do that. Another thing is, um, yeah, if I'm in the U.S., I would, I would definitely probably go to Florida, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, or New York. Like, the last place you would visit in the United States is the Appalachian Mountains. You go, the first places people think of when they think of the United States to go to is Florida, Hawaii, L.A., Las Vegas, New York. It's it. That's it. Nobody want to go anywhere else in the U.S., man. Nobody want to go to Washington, nobody want to go to Minnesota, nobody want to go to Chicago, you know, <laughs> nobody want to go to St. Louis, nobody want to go to Georgia, you know, nobody want to go to South Carolina, nobody want to go to Virginia, no, 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 no. When somebody comes to the U.S., they want to go to Florida, Hawaii, Las Vegas, L.A., and New York, and then that's it. We don't want to see North Dakota. I don't want to see South Dakota. I don't want to see Yellowstone. Nobody want to see Yellowstone. Like, I'm talking about international travelers, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, man. Chris Travis, why do you say David Bond is going to look 40 when he's 75? Why? Is it because he's just living a relaxed... I haven't actually... I haven't tuned into a... I haven't tuned into a David Bond's... Uh, channel in a, like a long time. I remember I used to watch him every day. I used to watch, he used to do really good, David Bond used to do really good shows on his, um, on his financial situation. Like he would show, so David Bond used to show how he was making the money for traveling. So he, he used to do like selling these single man packages. So he would sell the single man package online. I think it was a PDF and he would charge and then he would he would blast it out to his followers, and I think he used an email, like an email delivery service, and, um, and, um, <laughs> I can't imagine being a foreign tourist coming to America for one ninety nine stay <laughs> Motel 6. <laughs> Johnny, be careful. <laughs> is it 190, are you serious? Is a Motel 6 in the United States, is it $199 to stay at a Motel 6 in the U.S.? So you see, that's another reason not to go to the U.S., man. The cost is expensive, man. If you pay, think about it. If you go to the United States, you're paying $200 a night for a Motel 6. That's ridiculous, man. I couldn't imagine going to the U.S., going to South Dakota, and you're paying $200 a night for a motel. That's insane. Like, who would go to the U.S. for that, man? That means you could just go to the U.S. for like a weekend. You could go to Miami for the weekend, get yourself a Motel 6, you stay there for the weekend, and then that's it. You know, so... Yeah, man. Yeah, man, of course he hasn't aged much in 10 years because he's living a relaxed lifestyle. He's, in, he's traveling the world. He's staying in nice hotels. He's not stressing out, man. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, Nikki. Yeah, she's got an Instagram. I haven't been on her Instagram in a while, but she got an Instagram. And you guys can go on there and check it out, man. So, uh, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Well, yeah, just hold on a second. I'm just doing, I'm doing, today is my day off. I shouldn't be doing work, but I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm doing work here, man. Come on, man. This is so ridiculous, man. So, yeah.
So anyways, yeah, I get four. Yeah, yeah, I do the four day week. I work the Amazon. Yeah, I do the Amazon um, work schedule. So I do four days on, and I do three days on. I'm a I'm a warehouse uh, shift supervisor, and I ride a forklift. And um, I have a big staff. I have a huge staff. I have a staff of like twenty people every day. And um, but most of the day, I'm just I'm riding the, the I'm riding the counterbalance truck. And I'm just moving the Kurgit in and out of the uh, the aisles for the racking. The high racking it goes up about a hundred feet. And you guys understand that. So, yeah, I'm a warehouse guy, man. <laughs> I'm a warehouse guy. I work in the warehouse. Actually, to be honest with you guys, before I wasn't a warehouse guy. I used to do sales and advertising. I used to do advertising, IT sales. And what happened was one time my friend said I have this manual labor job, and then. Um, and is that Amazon, you know, you're just going to be running, you're going to have to run the auger screws at the back of the warehouse. And so basically the auger screws basically crushed down the, uh, all of the uh, excess Kurigit. And uh, basically you're running the machine all day long. And uh, basically that's my job. And um, the counterbalance truck. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lift truck. It's a forklift, counterbalance, whatever you call it. Foul forklift, whatever. So, yeah. So basically, um... Um, yeah, I ended up there. I was actually the during the um, the pandemic. I was like the COVID supervisor. I was the supervisor for the COVID inspection process, and to make sure the COVID process was good. And then um, eventually, the other supervisor left, and I took his position. I didn't want to be a supervisor. I didn't want to be the. I didn't want to be. I just wanted to do a manual labor job. And then after that, I was just gonna. I was gonna. Um, I was gonna just go back into sales and advertising and stuff like that, but then that's eh, all right, man. I like like working in the warehouse, man. It's all good, man. It's my type of thing, man. Yeah, man. So, yeah, man. I'm so man. I'm working in warehouse is all right. I could work in any warehouse. I don't have to work just in Amazon. I could work in any warehouse. I could work any type of manual. Well, no, <laughs> this is Canada. In Canada, we don't have his, but we don't have Latinas here. We only have um, uh, um, dot Indians, right? We don't have, we don't have bow in, in Toronto. At least we don't have the bow, the the arrow Indians, the feather Indian. We only have the dot Indians. <laughs> so it's all like that here. All Indians here in Toronto, man. Yeah, it's all dot Indians. No. There's no Latinas, man. There's no, hardly, the Filipinas is going down, Chinese down, it's all, like, if you come to Toronto, you basically, you're in India, man. That's basically it, man. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even that much Chinese anymore. I mean, there might be, but this city is all, is all dot Indian. It's not Chinese. It's not Filipina anymore. It used to be, it used to be a lot of Chinese, but right now, uh, Trudeau has the temporary, um, the temporary worker program. So basically, all of Toronto is basically all Indians because they have, all the temporary workers are coming into the country. And um, it's basically in Toronto, we got like over a million people came in in like one year. One million, one and a half million people came into Toronto in like a year. It's insane. So, and all pretty much from one country. So you can imagine, man. <laughs> Hi, Brad. Do you have any Korean Indians? <laughs> So, yeah, man. So, basically, it's like that in Toronto right now. It's like, this is the... Yeah. Oh, they're stealing all the smart Indian people from India, and they're bringing them to Canada. <laughs> well, hey, if India allows their people to leave the country, and if they want to come to Canada, and they're bringing their money, or they're bringing their brains to Canada from India, I guess, hey, man, whatever works, right? So, yeah, basically, um... Basically, um, yeah, it's all good, man. We're stealing their people. So, hey, Canada steals people, man. That's, hey, man, if those people are going to pay for my pension, I don't, I don't care, to be honest. I don't care. Whoever pays my pension, then I don't care, man. <laughs> I don't care, man. We'll take their people. So, yeah, that's basically whatever. Whatever works. I know back in the day, back in the 1960s, it was the people from the Caribbean. Like, my parents came to Canada from Trinidad, Guyana. Jamaica back in the 1960s they all came to Canada so I guess it all comes in waves like there was a time when the Italians came to Canada I think the Italians came to Canada like in the 1940s or something 
and uh, you know the Irish came in the, like the 1800s. So every there's a way for all of the con these types of people coming into Canada, right? Because the pro the problem is Canada is so expensive, nobody makes babies here. So even when the immigrants get here, they're not making no kids. So nobody want to make kids here. It's just so expensive, man. That's why everyone's going to Thailand, Philippines, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. When you're in Sukhumvit, when you go down Sukhumvit, and especially when you get to like Soy 3, Soy 5, um, Soy 11, a lot of Indians, man. A lot of Indians. Actually, I think I'm going to do a vlog on it. I'll do a vlog on the, um, the Ambassador Hotel. It's like... Oh man, it's like all Indians. And when you're in when you're in Bangkok, right? And you go into Bangkok, if you're on Soy Eleven, you'll notice there's a lot of Indians there, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every yeah, that's true, man. Every wave of immigrants gonna support the generation of immigrants that are getting ready to retire. Exactly. Exactly. And Canada has an aging population, so we need to get all these kids in here. So we're bringing in millions and millions of kids to basically to support the pension we have to do it otherwise um so basically people don't like it okay so let me be straight with you guys i'm talking politics again so of course people we don't like all of this immigration but in a way the government kind of has to do it and the business wants it the business wants cheap labor and the government needs um the government wants um people to pay for the pension so they want labor and they need the pensions to be paid for so um so, uh, yeah, it's just the way it is, man. It's, it's basically, you know, uh, it's the way it is right now in Canada where we have to immigrate. It's not just Canada. I think Canada, the U.S., Australia, all of them are having mass, mass immigration into their countries. Nobody likes it, but, you know, maybe to, to financially, to balance the books, they got to do it. It's also the business elite are behind it, the, the globalist. So, yeah, you know, this is, it's the way it is, man. It's a, it's a, it's a very, um, it's a difficult situation for some people to be in. And, of course, it costs, it causes um, asset inflation, right? It causes asset inflation, um, where the cost of the housing is just goes through the roof. So, you know, in Toronto, like a little tiny apartment is like a million dollars, man. It's just, it's, it's insane, man. It's insane, insane, insane. And, um yeah yeah man and the, and that's the isn't that the thing with the the, the wef they, they want you to to own nothing and be happy man yeah well you see that's the problem for japan right so japan has that problem that they don't have anything their economy is stagnant now listen china is different than japan china also has the same problem but china China is very good with automation, so it may not impact China's economy because what China knows their population is going to shrink. So China already realizes, hey, our population is shrinking, but they're automating all of their industrial capacity. So China's industrializing all of their, their um, is automating all of their industrial capacity so that they don't lose nothing when they lose those workers. They're still going to have a very powerful economy able to produce a lot a lot a lot they're automating everything so it can be run by just a few people and you're going to get the same level of production even with less workers and uh, they're doing the same thing with their military too so everyone's like oh well when china's population shrinks we'll be able to to, to, to give them a good whack but no they're gonna everything is gonna be automated man they're gonna be all automated man so uh yeah man <laughs> <laughs> yeah well everybody want to be in thailand man i don't want to be in phil or philippines nobody want to be here it's expensive you got a lot of like you said you got millions and millions of immigrants are flooding into europe into canada into us into australia so everybody from canada everyone born in canada is trying to go to thailand philippines we're all trying to get out they're all trying to come here we're all trying to get out man <laughs> <laughs> Barry's gonna make 1500 babies <laughs> Barry's gonna make 1500 babies come on give me a break that guy's he's 70 years old man come on man he's a 70 year old guy man so I uh, you know <laughs> he's a 70 year old guy so yep So, yeah, I don't think he's making any babies, man. 
But anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we were talking about the biggest streamers in the Thailand genre, guys. We are talking about the biggest streamers. We've already, de we've already determined that Cheap Charlie is probably the biggest in the Thailand genre. Because he can get in chat. I've seen in his chat, Cheap Charlie can get like, he can get like 500 in his chat. Easy in his chat. And um, I've seen, uh, I've seen Jeff Leppard. He can average around 350. So Jeff Lepard gets about 350 on his uh, Travel Fund 69 cha channel. And then after that, is it uh, Ricky Drama? I would say Ricky Drama. And then at the bottom of the list is Be More Ron. So Be More Ron is at the, the bottom of the, the list. And then after that, you got the laggards of the Thailand genre. So that would be guys like Wander Nirvana, you know, uh, what's that guy's name? Jonathan North. Ben Newton, you know, all these guys are like at the laggard. Oh, another big streamer I forgot about is uh, What's Up Pattaya. He gets big, he gets big numbers in chat, and so does um, John555. And um, what's that? And the other one, Josh in La La Land. So there's Josh in La La Land. So there's other ones, those kind of in, in betweeners, like John555, What's Up Pattaya. Those guys do some pretty good numbers on their live streams too. They, they generate a lot of traffic, they get a lot of super chats, you know, so I just haven't, I haven't noticed uh, Josh in La La Land. I don't know if I have the alert for him when he goes live. I haven't been getting that alert anyway, so maybe I have to check my, um, my thing, man. Kelly gets 500 in chat. Oh, Kelly gets 500 in chat. I didn't know that, but is Kelly Thailand John? I've never seen Kelly in Thailand. I've never seen... Kelly in Thailand. I don't know how he's in the Thailand genre. I don't know what Kelly's association to the Thailand genre is. I've never seen him in Thailand. You know, I don't know. Does he go to Thailand? He gets 500 in chat. Is it like all oh, 512 year olds or something like that? I don't know. Does he go to Thailand? Do you guys know? Does uh, Kelly go to Thailand, guys? I've never seen him there. So that's why I didn't have him on my radar. I've never seen that guy in uh, Thailand, to be honest with you, man. So straight up, homies. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah, John five 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 only has twenty in chat. Okay, Overstay Road. He is currently in Thailand, or at least he was on his last live stream. Okay. Overstay Road, I'm a big follower of Overstay Road because you know when I when I first went to Philippines, I had to recreate and go down everything that Overstay Road did. But I don't consider Overstay Road, um, I don't consider Overstay Road, um, Thailand. Johnny's he's Philippines, man. But he's cool too. I like Overstay Road, man, too much, man. Overstay Road, he's a cool guy, you know, and uh, you know. And, uh, yeah, man, I've, I've always liked Overstay Road, man. I've been following that guy for years, man, so. So, these guys are guys that, you know, I really enjoy, uh, enjoy watching, man. The Overstay Road, man, <laughs> guy's hardcore, man. He's a hardcore, and he got a lot of girls. He has, like, Overstay Road has one wife here, and he has another wife here. You know, you got like, yeah, I got my Filipina number one, and I got my Filipina number two. And then it goes back home, U.S., and then it's cool, man. <laughs> Overstay Road, man. That guy's too cool, man. I like that guy too much, man. Overstay Road. That's what I'm talking about. So, yeah, man. South South Thailand, but yeah, some vacation. I, uh, I always liked the Canadian guy, Pattaya Sleeman. Oh, yeah, Pattaya Sleeman. I, I, I follow his Insta. I think he has an Instagram. So I follow more his Instagram than his YouTube, Pattaya Sleeman. So, yeah, man, these guys are hardcore, man. This is how you got to live life, you know. There's a, guy from, there's a guy from Toronto. So there's this live streamer in Toronto. His name is uh, Johnny Strides. And um, he just goes around Toronto filming random like streets in downtown Toronto 
And uh, he never left Toronto. He would never leave Toronto. He was just strictly Young Street, Queen Street, Entertainment District, Subways, Dufferin Street. Like, he would just go every street in Toronto. And he was doing that for years and years and years. I think he had like 50 or 60,000. And then as he got closer to 100,000, he, I don't know, for some reason, he decided to take a flight. He went to Thailand. And then he met uh, Jeff Lepard. And he's a big streamer. He got 100000 And uh, now he goes to Thailand. And I saw his last video. He looked like he bought a condo in Thailand. He bought a condo in Pattaya. So he's a big streamer now. But he doesn't get a lot in chat. Um, but he's going to be in Thailand streaming. And he usually gets about four or 500 in chat. Johnny Strides. He's also from Toronto as well. So he's another Toronto streamer that's going to be in Thailand now. A lot of people from Toronto now are in in the YouTube community from Toronto are now just going to Thailand. I think it's because of, like I said, the immigration situation here. People in Toronto, man, we don't want to be in India, man. We want to be in Thailand, the Philippines. If you're in Toronto now, you're basically you're in India, man. So we got to get the hell out of here. And so everyone's going to Philippines. They're going to Thailand and all of that, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Thailand bound gets three to four hundred in his chat. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Yeah, man. They're, it's Because they, they, it's the same situation. you got to pay for their pension. It's the, the business elite, and the you got to pay for the pension. That's why the Indians are coming in. They're going to pay for your pension, man. So that's basically why they're bringing in the Indians, because they got to pay for our retirement. They say all these old people are going to retire. Who's going to pay for all these guys? You guys don't make no kids. They're like, you guys made no kids. But, of course, we could say that it's the Western women... They say they, you know, Western women will say you if you, you if you try to go on a date. Let's say you're a twenty year old guy, and you try to go on a date with a Western woman. You got to be like six feet tall. You got to look like uh, John Pitt or Brad Pitt or whatever. You got to be like, and you got to be making over a hundred thousand. If you don't meet those requirements, these girls do not want to have nothing to do with you. And there's only a few guys that meet that requirement that look like Brad Pitt, over six feet. Have muscles, make over a hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars a month. There's such a few percentage of guys that are like that. So what happens is these girls only with one guy. So this one guy is basically gonna have to repopulate the whole country because all the other guys are not meeting that requirement. So these guys are gonna. These are the guys like me. They gotta go to Thailand, Philippines, you know, because these girls here they don't have no time for us, man. So that's the reason why the population here in North America is falling the natural population but it's in increasing because of immigration because they had to open the doors to mexico and all this because there's nobody making any kids here so it's kind of how it is man yeah um as any plans well canada was never india phobic because we always had indians here but it wasn't like the whole population was in India. <laughs> but now, Toronto, the whole population is Indian now. The whole city is Indian now. Before, it, Toronto used to be, there was a few black people. There were a few Chinese, some, some Filipinos. There were some Iranians. And that was it. It was just a little bit of India. A little bit of India, like 1% Indians, 1% Chinese, 1% black. Like, there was a mix. But because of the situation now where the government is doing the mass migration, we got one and a half million 20-year-old Indian kids that came into the country, man. One, one and a half or two million came into the country, 20-year-old Indian kids. That's just, it's insane. And most of them came to Toronto. So Toronto's population in the past year, Toronto's population has gone up by over one and a half million. In just one year, our population increased by one and a half million. And it's just insane growth, man. And, um, yeah, I don't know, they, they're saying we don't have the capacity to build the, the amount of houses for these number of kids. we got to build, so we're already building more skyscrapers than any city on earth, pretty much. But we got to build even more. So Toronto builds roughly, um, has a, about 120, 150, or 160 skyscrapers under construction at any time. So Toronto builds more high-rises than pretty much any city outside of China. Toronto builds more. Even in China, even Toronto builds a lot, but we got to increase that by so much more. They're saying we're going to be building like three, four hundred skyscrapers at a time to hold all of these people, man. It's going to it's gonna take a long time, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's Indians. It's not Pakistanis. It's Indian, man. It's not Pakistani. It's Indians. There's no... Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think Vancouver is going to be Vancouver for much longer because they're going to Vancouver too. So pretty soon, even Vancouver is going to be like Delhi and Bangladesh. Even Van Vancouver. And the thing is, that place is expensive, but there's a place in Vancouver called Burnaby, and it's all, I think, Sikh. It's all Punjabi. So you're going to see that... Um, you're going to see that all of Canada, the big cities, are all going to be majority Indian pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, man. They used to call it Hong Kong, yeah, but now the Chinese are going to get, they're going to get swamped. Everybody's getting swamped. doesn't matter if you're in Vancouver, Calgary, all of these cities are going to become all majority Indian cities, man. I'm telling you right now. All of them. And uh, it's because, like I said, the Western women, they have a very high standard. <laughs> Um, they're not dealing with these local guys. Local guys go to the Philippines. Canada government has nowhere to make any babies, so they got to import the babies from India. That's basically the situation that you have right now, where you have basically a mass migration. It's not just Canada. Like I said, it's Europe too. It's USA. It's Australia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always find it funny. Very... <laughs> <laughs> man if my rent's three thousand dollars that's it there ain't no traveling to thailand or philippines if my rent was three thousand i ain't able to travel to uh philippines man at three thousand dollars a month and you know what three thousand dollars a month is like the low rent in toronto so i think the rent now is going to four thousand five thousand especially downtown but uh yeah toronto is ridiculous for the rent man it's just insane because they we're not building enough. We were building a lot, but we were building for... Toronto was building on the expectation that we were going to get 100,000 people a year coming to Toronto. So they built enough buildings for 100,000 or 200,000 people a year to come to Toronto. But we did not expect to be getting like a million and a half people. So there's not, not enough buildings. So now the federal government has to get involved. The federal government's going to put in about 400 billion. So we got to build the housing very fast to support all these people. They say in another 15 years, Toronto's going to have... In 15 years. So listen, guys. In 15 years, Toronto's going to have a population of 15 million people. I think that's... About the same size as pretty good, pretty close to what LA is now. That's Toronto in 15 years, it's gonna be 15 million. And it's not like LA, LA is all so LA is a sprawly city. So Toronto is not like Los Angeles, where everything is a sprawling suburb. Toronto is all like high rises, so it's got to be all high rises. So it's gonna be 15 million people in a much tighter compact area than in Los Angeles. 15 years. They say 15 million. Ontario, they said in 15 years, Ontario is going to be 22 million people. So Toronto will have 15 million. Ontario itself will have 22 million people, which is insane. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. 15 million. 15 million people. Right now, it's about 12. It's about, no, right now, greater Toronto area, if you put it in all of, you go all the way to Waterloo, Niagara, and Oshawa, I think it's about 10 million, 9 or 10 million. So another 15 years, 5 million more people, so 15 million. Yeah, man. And then Ontario will be 22 million, 15 years from now. 22 million people. It's just, it's insane, man. Because like I said, you got to support the old people. So they're really going to be, this is just the beginning. What we're seeing now is just the tip of the iceberg. Obviously, the government has a much bigger plan for Toronto and for Ontario than what, um, than what we're currently experiencing, man. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it's, it's going to be insane, but they got to pay those pensions, man. They got to keep paying the pensions, man. So that's life, man. But thank you guys for coming to Toronto, Brad. We're talking about Thailand, John. I didn't want to get into politics there. It always happens to me. I always get sidetracked by politics, man. I always get sidetracked by politics. Sometimes I just can't help it, man. You know, I just... <laughs> you know... I can't help it. Always talking about politics, man. 
But um, yeah, man, what do you guys think? I mean, taxes are unreal in Toronto. The left wants to tax till the rain falls, man. Exactly, man. <laughs> yeah, I watched, actually, I was watching this show on Sweden. <clears throat> in Sweden, they had this show. I don't know if you guys heard about this show on Sweden. It was like, it was like the Swedish version of the British show. So British, the, Brit, the, the people in the UK, they have a show in the United Kingdom. It's called Top Boy. And so Top Boy was basically like a show about how the gangs in the United Kingdom, how they operate and all of that. And then I was, and, it, and it's like Top Boy is like maybe one of the, the, the best shows that they have in the United Kingdom. It's like the number one show in the United Kingdom. And then they had a show in Sweden and it shows what's going on in Sweden with the gangs and they call it Snabacash. It was so good. It's also also like a it's like the it's like Top Boy but more guns because Sweden not like the UK with the it's so hard to get a gun. Sweden it's more easier to get gun. So Swedish gangs are like they're armed to the teeth. They have the big big guns and they show like in Sweden how the gangs are operating and they're just shooting everything up man. But that show is so good. So if you guys get a chance, you guys should watch Snapcash. I think it's on Netflix. You guys can watch it. And Top Boy. I think Top Boy is on Netflix, too. I think I watched Top Boy and Snap a Cash. Both of them on Netflix, man. Both of them really good shows, man. You have Netflix. You should just definitely check that, that out, man. It's going to show you how the gangs are running in countries, man. Yeah, it's rough, man. But it's not Swedish gangsters, guy. It's not like blonde, blue-eyed gangster. These are the... The guys running the gangs in Sweden, there's a few, like, the native-born, blonde hair, blue-eyed, Viking, Swedish gangsters. There's only a few. Most of the gangsters in Sweden are, like, black guys or Arabs that are running the Swedish uh, underground are black guys and Arab guys. But there's only a few of the Swedish Viking guys that are a part of it that are trying to stay above it. So usually, like, the financial stuff, the financing stuff... The big wig stuff is the white Swedish guy, and then all the underlings are like black and the blacks and the Arabs that are actually on the streets doing the, the the shooting and the killing and all of that are the blacks and the Arabs in Sweden. So, and they're, they're yo man, you watch Snabacash, you'll see how it how it works, man. It's, it's hardcore, man. It's hardcore, man. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like the biker gangs. Yeah, same thing, like the biker gangs here in uh, Toronto. So in Toronto, in Toronto, all of the um, the street-level stuff, most of the street-level stuff in Toronto is black guys. So all the street-level dealing is black guys, like 90%. Maybe some Asian gangs, like Indian and some like East Asian, Chinese, Vietnamese gangs, but most of it's like the black guys. But it's all on a chain. The guys at the top are the bikers. And then they're financers. So the bikers don't get involved in the street level stuff inside the city of Toronto. It's, like, it's mainly like black guys. So when you, someone got to get shot and killed and all of that, you know, um, it's the black guys that going to shoot you, right? And Or it could be Russian, sometimes Russian. But it's the bikers that they, they, the chain of command, the hierarchy is the bikers are on the top. They are doing the, 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 the mass importation of the product. They ship down to the black guys. The black guys are on the street. They're the low-level dealers and also the enforcers. And they're the ones that do doing all the, the shooting up and all that kind of stuff on the, on the street. Where the bikers can keep their hands clean so the cops can't even say, well, they did this or that. And then if the, if the bikers, they don't want to get their hands dirty. They can always, what they've done in the past, not only the bikers, even the... The Italians, the mafia, they go down and they get the, got the the street level guys to do the killing if they don't want to get their hands involved. But sometimes the Italians, they have to do it their own way. You know, the Italians and the bikers, sometimes they got to do it their own way. Like they got to send a message. In that case, they won't use like a street level guy. They will use their own Cosa Nostra guy to do the, the job, you know, or they'll do it the biker way when they have to go to the clubhouse and just ring the clubhouse up. They will do it themselves. They're not going to get somebody to, uh, you know, to, to do that, man. <laughs> Go to Goku. I was watching that guy. What's that guy's name? Um, 
Shulk. I forgot the guy's name is. I was watching that kid, the kid that does the workout. I was watching that guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, what's the guy's name? The guy, that the young bodybuilder, the 20-year-old bodybuilder guy that's so huge. 20-year-old bodybuilder. I forgot what his name is. 20-year-old bodybuilder. I'll pull it up right now. That's the guy I was watching. 20-year-old bodybuilder. What's his name? 20-year-old bodybuilder. What's this guy's name? You guys know what that guy's name is? A 20-year-old bodybuilder. He's a YouTuber. Oh, I forgot what his name is, man. Yeah, here he is. I see him here. This guy, man. I forgot what this guy's name is, man. Yeah, Sam Sulik. Yeah, that's the guy. Sam Sulik. Yeah, everybody's watching that guy. That guy's a monster, man. Holy crow. That guy's so big, man. Shit. Yeah, man. Brad, you should be watching Not Dudes Working. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. But anyways, man. That's life in the big leagues, man. Anyways, we were talking about Thailand's dream, and we end up talking about all kinds of other nonsense, man. We end up talking about, we ended up talking about everything else except, um, you know, the biggest streamers. We were talking about Cheap Charlie, you know, talking about this and that, you know. But anyways, guys. Well, thank, thank you guys, man. For, yeah, he is a science experiment. <laughs> Hands coming through, man. Hands coming through. Yo, guys. Gotta get back to Thailand, man. That's the deal. We gotta be the biggest streamer in the Thailand genre. We gotta be that streamer. You know what I mean? It would be better if it's for one of us that goes to Thailand and does some streaming. And you go in hardcore. And, and then... You know, you get all the chick like Jeff Leppard, you know how he was there, and he had all them girls there. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's the kind of, that's the kind of vibe that I would, like, you know, be like, yeah, guy, go to Thailand like that, you know? So, yeah. So, yeah. Biggest streamers in the Thailand genre, man. Uh, overtime like Ron. You should put extra day or two to get back to, with some... Yeah, I guess I could. I mean, I could go back, but it, I just need to relax. I just came back a month ago. Let me build up my savings. I got to pay off my credit cards. I'm still paying off my credit cards. Uh, it's going to take me at least another month or two to pay off all my credit card bills. And then I got to build up a little bit of savings, you know. I stayed... I didn't stay at all the nice hotels, obviously. I didn't... I stayed at the Prime Asia. St. Giles was nice. I stayed there for over a week. I stayed at St. Kyle's Hotel. Over one week I stayed there. Um, you know. So, yeah, man, we can... We, you know, we can do some more traveling around and have some fun and this and that. I should have stayed at some nicer hotels, man. Tiger Hotel. No, I just did a vlog on the Tiger Hotel guy. Oh, my God. I did a vlog on Tiger Hotel. I just did a vlog on it. But it's not coming out for another one month. So you won't see it for another month. I, I posted it on my content channel here. So you see, if you check my content channel, I did a vlog on the Tiger Hotel. I still haven't done the thumbnail yet. So it'll come out on April the 22nd. I still got to make the thumbnail. So I'll make the thumbnail for it later. And then I just did it. And then it'll come out on the 22nd of April. And then I'll go in on the Tiger Hotel you know, oh man, <laughs> Tiger Hotel. I know Maximus, you like the Tiger. Actually, you know what? You guys can still watch it here, guys. I, I'll let you guys get a sneak peek of my uh, my uh, Tiger Hotel vlog. It's not coming out for another month, but you guys can still watch it. Let me get the volume up here. Tiger Hotel that I stayed at when I was in Angeles City in Pampanga. 
So basically, I, I booked this room online, and I um, I was, you know, I, I was just looking for something cheap, and maybe I made a mistake. It was, it was roughly, what, 20-ish Canadian dollars a night? Maybe a less than a thousand, or roughly a thousand pesos, or something like that per night, so it wasn't expensive at all for for uh, what I paid, but this is true, true, you know, fan room level hotel, even though it, it did have air conditioning, it's not technically a fan room, it had air conditioning, and it was, it was adequate, but it was roughing it compared to the other hotels that I stayed at, which were really relatively nice. This one was definitely the lowest grade. And I guess it, it's okay hotel if this is your maximum budget. But for someone like me, it was not what I expected. So uh, I would recommend if you do have... That's bug spray. Not, that's the bug spray. Really You're going to need bug spray at the Tiger Hotel, man. You <laughs> I had to buy a can of bug spray, man. Very limited resources for, uh, for accommodation. Uh, there were some bugs. I did think I saw some bugs there, so I did pick up uh, a can of uh, bug spray. So when I came into the hotel, I think it was the first night, Turned the lights on. I saw something move. I wasn't sure. It ran under the bed. It was like a big thing. I wasn't sure if it was um, what it was, but I'm not going to make any assumptions because I didn't see it clearly. I think Nita said she saw something in the washroom. So, you know, hey, take it as you will. Like I said, man, you're not paying a lot. So it is what it is. Another thing that you need to consider here with this hotel is that it doesn't have the, uh, the bum spray, the, the bum gun. So we had to pick up this ladle and this little spray bottle uh, for the washroom. And uh, you can see that they didn't have a sign here not to throw anything down the toilet. See, that's what I had to use as my bum gun. Again, I had to get a spray down. bottle and a ladle. What the fury AC? Man, come yeah, on, man. No bum gun? And what are you talking about, man? I would recommend it. I would say, yeah. Go to Tiger Hotel. But if you have the means, I would recommend going away from this place. So after I stayed at this hotel, I was like, man, there's no reason to stay here. We can, we can stay at a proper hotel. So we just went down the street and um, we stayed at another hotel. I think we stayed at the Prime Asia. But I just wanted you guys to share my experience here so that you can make your own judgment. Like I said, it's not bad for the money. You, if you, you know, your money is low. This place is great. You'd be like, this is heaven for you. But if you got a little bit of money, then you're going to be like, man, let's get a better place. You know, you can afford it. So why not? So, yeah. So anyway, this place is on Narasuko. It's just down the road from Fields. So it's pretty much right in the party district. Fields and Walking Street. You're like five minutes from Walking Street. You're like five minutes from Fields. No, and Thailand. The, the, the plumbing in the Philippines is not... The, um, SM the plumbing in the Philippines is not good. Here. You know that already, man. So... It's no problem. Uh, you're really centrally located to all of the nightlife and everything like that, which is probably the main selling feature of this hotel. Uh, the, the hotel did have uh, cable, did have HBO. So all the hotels I stayed at in the Philippines have HBO, Netflix. So the TV and watching is never an issue. Me and Nito will sit there. We watch all of our movies. and That's no problem. It had a fridge, got all our drinks in there. We put all our candies and everything in there. So we were good to go, so it had a safe. So definitely, um, this is just my point of view is that it's not terrible. It's like, it's better than a Cambodian fan room. You know what I mean? <laughs> so take it as you will, it's okay. It's got, it's, got, it's got a cable box, it's got an air conditioning remote. You know, it's clean, well, relatively clean. I mean, it's out, outside of the bugs that we saw. And it's centrally located. And uh, the bed was comfortable. There was no issues there. And um, like I said, uh, it, it had a little bit of a coffee service there. You can get a little coffee or tea in the lobby with the waiting area. So it's not, like I said, it's just 
very bare minimum and it will get the job done but it just depends on you what your level of standard is for your hotel accommodation yeah man so that's uh, yeah that's tiger hotel so yeah that that video will come out in another month or so i'll have that video will be coming out so um yeah i uh i uploaded it yesterday last night i finished making it and i uploaded it last night so I'll make a few more videos today and I'll upload them and show us your vids that you like. <laughs> you want me to be like Be More Ron and lose my channel? <laughs> you want me to be like Be More Ron? Oh man, Be More Ron. I ask Be More Ron. I go, I go to Be More Ron. I go, why are you not monetizing your channel? <laughs> so Be More Ron says he doesn't want to monetize his uh, channel because... Um, He's still trying to get the old channel back. He still wants that $3,000, man. But what Be More Ron doesn't understand is he ain't getting that $3,000 back. YouTube ain't going to give it to him. YouTube ain't going to give him his channel back. That's it. Forget it. That's YouTube's money now. And now you just got to set up your new channel and monetize it. I don't know why he thinks he's going to get this money back. He said they have some, there's some legal issue why he's not able to monetize it, whatever both Just monetize your channel and start over again, and you'll be okay. I see he's got a little challenge working, trying to make some $8,000 or something so he can go back to Thailand. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he ain't getting that money back. But, uh, yeah, Ron just need to be smart, start working hard, save for a long time, and then eventually, um, you know, he'll get back to that same level when he goes back to Thailand. If he's, he's you got to make sure when he goes to Thailand, you got to make sure you're monetized. You'll make that money in no time, man. The way he streams, you'll make it in no time, man. And, uh, you know, I just hope he doesn't. The only problem with the way Ron streams is that it's, it's going to kill his liver, man. You know, it's going to kill his liver, man. I don't know how Ron is going to, I don't know how, I don't know what the longevity of Ron's, streaming is gonna be man because the way he drinks is like it's insane like your liver can only take so much before it starts to degrade so you're either gonna get bile cancer liver cancer you're gonna get some kind of gut cancer stomach cancer you're gonna get something man but the amount of alcohol cause alcohol is basically poison you know and that's what happened to me remember that day i was puking up your body just rejects it my body rejects poison and the way he consumes it, it's like, man, he's just consuming poison. And alcohol is, like, probably the number one cause of cancer, man. Alcohol is the number one cause of cancer, is alcohol. Because it's literally poison that you're putting into your body. And it's going to destroy your intestines, your stomach, your bile. It's going to destroy, your, it's gonna destroy your, your urine tract, your liver, so obviously you know, your throat, you know, anything inside you, the digestive tract that it's touching, it's destroying, man. Yeah, man, you're going to get all kinds of shit. And, yo, the more you drink, your your lifespan is getting cut short, man. And I learned that the hard way when I had my, um, when I did the um, Appleton Estate vlog, man, and I was puking all over the place. My body just rejects poison, man. It just, it can't do it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the way he drinks. His lifespan is not going to be very long. He's not going to live for a long time. And, um, you know, he knows that, but he's taking it. So that's why he, that's why he wants that $3,000. Because his body, he sacrificed his body for that $3,000. He sacrificed his body. He sacrificed his liver, his gut, his throat, you know, you know, and everything his prostate everything he he sacrificed that to get that three thousand dollars that's probably the reason why ron wants that three thousand dollars back because um you know he, he he made the sacrifice he wants it back but he's not going to get it back that's why maybe better not to stream that way better not to do those drunk streams you know and then that way you don't have to feel so you know, indebted to the money that you earn off of that if something happens, like the way he is, like, just monetize your channel and get to it, guy, don't worry about, don't worry about getting that money back, it ain't coming back, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly, and then you, and even, let's say you, even if you don't die, you're gonna just be living with a lot of health conditions, you know, you're gonna be living with a lot of health conditions, man, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, man. So, you know, you want to live in the right way, man. Don't live the wrong way. You want to live the right way, man. And the way Ron's living is definitely not the right way. It's not a good way to um to uh, increase his earnings. There's other ways to make money. Like, he's doing his Uber. He can do a little bit online, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the wrong way to live. Does he have kids? Does Ron have kids? He's he got a mortgage. Does he have kids? Does like does he have somebody that's gonna take over for him when he's gone? Like, what's the point of working if you're gonna die young and he has all this stuff? But I think he has a lot of debt. I think he said he has a lot of debt on his credit cards. I don't know. Somebody said he had something like seventy five thousand in credit card debt or something like that. That's that's insane. I don't know. Did he say seventy five thousand or sixty thousand in credit card debt? Maybe 75000 Canadian in credit card debt he has. And, um, yeah, and his age. I think he's, how old is he? Ron is, what, 44? So, yeah, I guess, I guess it's possible. I guess it's possible that um, based on uh, the way he's, the way he streams and that. Oh, he's 42. Okay, I thought he was 44. Okay, he's 42. All right, I thought he was a bit older than that, but still, you got to take it easy on the uh, the drinking, man. He, otherwise, yeah, he's not going to have much longer to live. Like, when he's my age, when he's 50, you won't be in a good shape, man. Yeah, people still watch him and donate. The issue with being a... Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem, right? That's why he made that money is because he's drinking. He's sacrificing his body to get the donations on the stream. He is sacrificing his body, so that's why he really wants that money from YouTube. He's like, listen, man, I sacrificed half my liver for that $3,000. You better give me that $3,000 back. And YouTube's like, no, man, you want to sacrifice your liver and use our platform, you're going to follow our rules. If you don't, then it's in the contract. It's in the contract when you agree to allow YouTube to monetize your channel, that if you violate it, you're going to forfeit that money. It's in the contract. They, there's basically what you say... There is no legal recourse for Ron to obtain that $3,000 back from YouTube. No legal recourse. And he signed the contract and he agreed to it. And as soon as that grind B had uh, any um, access to his account on the stream yard, doesn't matter. That's, that, that's, that was Ron's responsibility to maintain the integrity of his channel. And he didn't. And obviously he paid the price for it, man. Mm hmm yeah, but he said he had, uh, I think he said he had $50,000 in debt. Didn't he say when he came back from the Philippines or from Thailand, he had 50000 And he said he had to pay that off. So, you know. And I think he owns some Tesla stock. He said he owns some Tesla stock or something like that. I don't know. I heard him say that he had some Tesla stock or something like that. He has a couple, four or 500 shares of Tesla. So... Yeah, and he almost paid off his mortgage. Oh, he's paid off his mortgage, right? Okay, so he's almost paid off his mortgage. All right, excellent, man. Yeah. Yeah, Tesla stock. Oh, it's falling. Yeah, yeah, Tesla stock's falling because of, I think, Twitter. You know, but the thing is, Elon Musk is more than Tesla, man. You know, he has Tesla, but he has, um, he has, you know why Tesla's tanking, right? Because the Chinese electric car companies are, amazing man byd and what's the other one there's a lot of these uh, the chinese electric car companies and the thing is you the tesla has to go to these guys for the batteries it's gonna be messed up man you're gonna see in the future the especially if the sanctions are going on between the west russia and china you're gonna see that it's gonna cause problems for tesla that's probably the reason why the tank the stock is falling because these Chinese companies are good, man. They're making some cars like there's no tomorrow. They make them nice, man. Those cars have all computer. Like the car is a basically a computer. Like when you turn on the car, it's a computer. The car looks like a computer. And it's like and but they're expensive, obviously, 60, 70,000, but the Chinese are making them like there's no tomorrow. The Chinese even made cars that look like a Ferrari. They made ones that look like a Lamborghini, but all electric, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, Tesla, it was way ahead before, 
but now I'm not sure that Tesla has, the gap was very wide. Tesla was way ahead of everybody, but now the, the gap is, it is decreasing between those Chinese companies, Kia, Hyundai, even the American companies, Ford and GM, they're catching up and they're catching up fast. That's why the Tesla stock is, uh, are, are um, tanking, man. There's just too much competition and then Tesla can't maintain, unless it can maintain a productive capacity advantage, like a, a, the ability to produce more. I don't know if, um, if, uh, if it's going to be a, a thing that, the uh, that uh, Tesla can maintain its uh, high valuation. But like we were saying, Elon has other, Elon has other, um, like, businesses. He has the uh, SpaceX. He has the SpaceX, what's the other one? He has Twitter, you know. Yeah, they do <laughs> solve combustion. <laughs> yeah, man. April is big. Or a car and motorcycle in Japan, Thailand. The Chinese are bringing it, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, man. The, the Chinese are really doing the production. And, yes, they, the cars. But you know what? The, what? Everyone laughs at the Chinese cars with the self-exploding batteries. But Tesla had the same problems, too, right? With the batteries exploding. Even here, the batteries are exploding. So, they're putting restrictions on the batteries because the, the batteries all keep exploding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He has a mining company too. There you go, man. Yeah, Tesla is te te Elon Musk is going to be fine no matter what. Elon Musk is fine. He, there ain't going to be any issue with Elon Musk, man. I'm telling you that right now. So, you'll be fine no matter what. <laughs> so, but um, you know. But guys, Yeah, Thailand will be my next trip, man. I think I'll go to Thailand next, man. I think Thailand will be my next trip, but it'll depend on my money and what I'm doing. And then, of course, I have to consult with Nita. Nita not going to like me going to Thailand, especially because she's in Dubai. So we'll have to see. But it ain't going to be a while. I got to save up a lot of money. And right now, I got nothing. So we'll see about that. But I would like to go to Thailand on the next trip for sure. I'd like to go to Thailand. I'd like to go to Singapore too. Back to Singapore. Do my full travel itinerary, man. We'll do a full travel itinerary. Do Bangkok and... <laughs> Why, you know, Lisa? <laughs> she got... Oh, man. Why, you know, Lisa? Oh, you guys want to see what Alyssa's doing these days? Let's pull her up, man. Let's pull her up. Uh, she's on my Facebook, man. Let's take a look and see what Alyssa's doing these days, man. Oh, man. Don't you love them Vietnamese girls? Look at that Vietnamese girls, guy. Look at Vietnamese. Vietnamese girls, guy. Vietnamese. When you pull up Facebook, it's, a, it's already a party on Facebook, man. The second you pull up your Facebook, it's a, it's a party on Facebook, man. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, let's see what, what see what Alyssa is doing. What's Alyssa doing? Alyssa, let me put in, punch in her name here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are too much, man. You guys are killing me. All right, here's Alyssa. Let's see what Alyssa's been doing. This is Alyssa. You guys remember Alyssa? There's Alyssa. Alyssa. Alyssa, that's walking Alyssa, man. That's her. There she go, man. We like walking like them thang, them thangs is stanging. That's what we used to say in the hood. Them thangs is stanging. <laughs> them thangs is stanging. <laughs> walking Alyssa, man. Yeah, I remember her, man, back in the day style. She always, uh, she always came in my chat and, you know, she talked to me and, uh, you know. So, yeah, you're right, man. She got... 
Every day she got a new boyfriend, man. She got a new boyfriend every day, man. <laughs> every day she has a new boyfriend, Alyssa, man. She got a new boyfriend there. She got a young stud, man. She found herself a young stud. Look at how happy that guy is, man. <laughs> she found herself a young stud, man. He liked them lap jacks, man. <laughs> She found herself a young stud. Anyway, let me see if she got any more pictures here. I'm looking to see if I can find some more pictures of her here. Let me see if she got some pictures. Mm-mm. Not much. Of she don't really post that much pictures. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You met her? Did you meet her, Chris? Did you go to Thailand and meet her? Uh, let me see. I'm going to go on my photo side here. I'm checking to see if she has any good pictures and stuff like that. Well, she has man about to get rinsed. There she is there. Wanna listen. She looks 85. <laughs> he looks 85 years old. There's Wahi and Alyssa. She's okay, you know, considering she's in her 40s. I think she's in her 40s. Not bad. She's not a bad chick, actually. She's alright, man. She loves dogs. There's another young stud. She got another young stud there. Look at that guy. She got this young stud, man. There you go. You're going to do her right, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, there she got another one. There's another boyfriend there. She found another boyfriend there. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's her son? <laughs> it's her son? That don't look like her son. <laughs> I don't think that's her son, man. <laughs> And let's see what else we got going on here. Oh, she got a white boy here. She got a young white boy. She got a young... That's why she's smiling. Look at her there. She got a young white boy. There you go. <laughs> that's the thing about Thai girls. They're not ashamed to post all their their boyfriends on their Facebook, man. <laughs> they, they post all their boyfriends on here. And like, there ain't no tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, let's see if she got any more boyfriends that she got that she posted in here. She have a lot of boyfriends. Sometimes the boyfriend don't want their picture taken. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes they don't want the the guys don't want to be in the picture. But uh, yeah, so here she's another guy. She's got always a lot of guys in there. She always partying there. She's with some bunch of these guys. They look like X Pack guys. She was bugging me to come to Thailand. She's like, when are you going to come to Thailand? She kept on bugging me to come to Thailand to hang out with her, man. I'm like, yeah. All these, all these Thailand grannies, they always bug me. Like, oh, you come to Thailand. You're going to come to Thailand. Yeah, you're going to come to Thailand. She always bugs on me to come to Thailand. I think that's it. I'm not... I don't see any more guys here. So yeah, man. It's all good, man. Yeah, you got on Facebook. Oh, man. Oh, you guys been watching that new Why I Only See a White Guy. Chinese guys. Most delusional streamer, <laughs> Steph Traveler. What, what, yo, Steph, shouldn't you be in your bed, said guy? What happened to Blondie, Steph? Yo, Steph, whatever happened to Blondie? I haven't seen Blondie for a while, man. Where's Blondie at? What's going on with Blondie, man? You tell you tell me what's going on with Steph. How many guys? <laughs> I think she bugs to come to town. A lot of guys, man. She bugs a lot of guys, man. Where are you gonna be down to by next Monday? <laughs> she bugs a lot of guys to come to Thailand, man. I don't doubt it, man. Look at this, man. That's why I don't. That's why I don't go on Facebook, man. This is the reason why I don't go on Facebook, man. <laughs> Facebook is ridiculous, man. Am I e begging? Uh, no, I don't e beg. I I work. I I work in a warehouse, man. I don't do e begging because I work in a warehouse, man. 
So I work like 11, 12 hours shifts, man. And um, now I'm running the forklift in the warehouse and I have a staff of 20. I'm a, super, I'm a shift supervisor. So I uh, know I don't eBay. I paid for my um, tuna kahuna covered me for five hundred dollars for my trip to Philippines. So I have to thank tuna kahuna for that. But outside of that, I had to cover all the other expenses myself. So I thank tuna kahuna for supporting me, man, on my trip. Tuna kahuna always come in big for me. He always give me big uh, super chats, and he was my main supporter. Uh, John Thomas give me some good support. Um, you know, uh, Keith Jenkins, Keith Jenkins give me a lot of support, man, you know, Keith Jenkins really threw down for me as well, at least a couple hundred bucks, so these guys were the ones that supported my trip, Troutheads, Troutheads came in big for me, man, so I have to thank all of those guys, because they made that last trip that I did to Philippines, they made it worthwhile, because they came in with the Super Chats, man, yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah, man, so, yeah. But I did streams with Alyssa here on with StreamYards. I used to do the streams with Alyssa. And, uh, yeah, man. Here's another Filipino, man. Yeah, of course. Nigel donates to me, man. There's another Filipino, man. That's the type of Filipino. When you go to Philippines, you're going to meet up with a Filipino like that, man. You know what I'm saying? You get a nice little Filipino like that. One time Filipino. Look at that sweet, sweet thing. Yeah, they're creepy looking, eh? When... Even Jay Z got a Filipina man. Look at Jay Z. Jay Z got a new Filipina girlfriend too, man. Jay Z going with the Filipina man. So she's Jay Z like them Filipinas too, man. He's going hardcore, man. Filipina style for Jay Z. Hmm. What else you got here? I think I need to do a vlog on the Ambassador Hotel in Bangkok, man. I think that's going to be my next vlog. Oh, look. This chick. Thailand. Thailand. Minnie Mae. Wow. Thailand, man. Yeah, Alyssa looks very old in real life. I think she looks... If you had met up with Barry's lady. Yeah, it's okay. Next time. Chris H., did you meet Alyssa? Chris H., you sound like you met up with Alyssa, man. You sound like you met her, man. There's Chloe Zhang. Chloe Zhang on Facebook. There's Chloe Zhang. Also the hottest hands down. Andy Gomez. Here's Andy Gomez is in the chat. Is this Andy Gomez, the Filipino guy, the streamer? Is that Andy Gomez, the... Oh, no, that's Andy Omar. I was like, is that Andy Omar? Oh, no, no, no. That's not Andy Omar. Yo, Boohoo, what's up, man? Boohoo in the chat. What's going down, man? We're just talking about the the best streamers in the Thailand genre. Cheap Charlie, Jeff Lepard. You know, what's up, Pattaya? You know, we got a lot of good streamers, man. You know. There's Mini Mai again. Back to Thailand. Mini Mai. She's like... Always on it, man. Mini Mai, she's streaming hardcore, man. She's on it, man. Mini Mai, woo, she's hot. She get a lot of comments on her post when she posts something. She she just uh, she gets a lot. You know, she get a lot of freaking uh, comments and stuff like that. Let me go to her. Let me go to her profile. Yeah, Minnie Mai, she's nice, man. Wow. Looking at the pictures, man. She got all right. She posts a lot of... Yeah, 
Sinisa Trump. Sinisa? No, man. Sinisa is too thick, man. I ain't down with Sinisa at all, man. This Mini Mai is hot, man. This Mini Mai? She's alright, man. If you imagine you got a girlfriend like Mini Mai. Mini Mai. Mini Mai. She's nice, man. I just see Mini Mai. She's alright, man. She's okay. Mini Mai. Mini Mai. <laughs> Black I love them thick ladies. Yeah, man. Yeah, she's alright, man. Woo! She's just killing it, man. Mini Mai. She got a lot of messages. She get when she posts a picture, she get like 80 comments, man. 80 comments, a hundred comments. Like a thousand comments. Obviously, man, every guy is trying to check her, so she gets like thousands of comments. Every time she posts a picture. She gets, uh, she gets a lot of comments, man. She's getting so many comments, man. So, yeah, that's Thailand for you, man. When you go to Thailand, Thailand is next level, man. Thailand is definitely next level for the hotties. But the problem is, you know, sometimes um, these girls, they look good on the Facebook, but they're small in real life. Like, when you go to Thailand, they're just so tiny. Yeah, they have a great body, but they're just, they're so small. You need a real tall, elegant lady, but sometimes these Filipinas and the ties, they're just too short for me, man. I need a taller, like, lady, you know, someone taller with a good height, you know. It can't be just a cleavage, because if you're short, it's no point, you know. So. You know, you need, a, you need some good height, man. I like good height. Anyways, guys, I got to do some chores today, guys. So I'm going to do a few other streams today. I, man, I, I got to do a lot of streams today. I got to do a stream in North York. And I'm going to do a stream in... Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a stream. North York, I'm going to be streaming in... Uh, the, um, I'm 6'3". So yeah, man, that's the problem, man. These, these girls are so small, man. They're too small. I need a girl that's a taller chick, man. You know who was a good height? Um, that girl, Liza Sanchez, man. When I was that Liza Sanchez, oh, man. She was good, man. I could show you guys Liza Sanchez, man. That girl had, and she had a butt. She was good. Like, if I show you, uh, when you're horizontal. Yeah, I guess not. It just depends. But uh, let me show you guys Liza. Let me show you guys Liza Toronto Brad. So Liza Sanchez, Toronto Brad. I'll pull up the video here. I'll never forget this one when I did this video. This uh, Liza Sanchez. I did a few with her actually. I did a few of these vlogs with her. You'll see her. She got them thangs are thanging. Look at this, look at her. The, 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 um, I'll do the video here, let's watch, watch this. Them things is thangin'. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Them things thangin', guys. She's got a nice height. And look at those cheeks, man. Look at those cheeks clapping, man. Those cheeks clapping, man. She got the best. I've never seen. She has the perfect shape, but, man. Take a look at this cheeks clapping here, man. Look at those cheeks. Oh, man. I wish I could have got a better shot of that man she had them things were clapping man when i saw her and i clapped them she, you get the reverb they clap like it's got a nice shape and it's perfect man let me see if i can find a a better video with those uh those uh those cheeks man hers are perfectly shaped man perfectly shaped claps man maybe this one is any good Let's take a look and see if this is a good one here. Hmm. I don't have any good videos. I thought I had some more videos of her, but I guess not. Yeah, of course, guy. Of course, homie, you know me, guy. There's a more Liza Sanchez. There's Liza Sanchez doing her thing. 
Got that. She got a nice shape, man. Oh, man, she's calling me now. This guy's calling me for the um, the compactor, but I don't know if I can take the call right now because um, I'm not at work. These guys have to run it. I'm going to have to send them the information for Jim Brown. So I'll send them the information. I'm not there on the Fridays, so this guy doesn't understand that. I'll have to send them the information. Let me get Jim's information because I'm not there. He's calling me about the outside of the warehouse, but I'm not there, so he can't call me, man. So just give me one second. I have to uh, give him another number. It's, I'm not at work today, so let me just get uh, this guy's number, and then I'll just send it to him. So Jim Brown. And then I'm just gonna take this. And I'm gonna view contact. No, 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 no. It's uh, it's work. It's not. It's <laughs> it's not. It's not a thing. So I'm gonna share this to uh, Joe Demello. I'm going to send it to him. Where's this guy? This guy called me. I'm just going to send him the guy's number because I don't have a... <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's work. It's a, it's a guy that works for one of the, uh, the trucking companies that comes to the back of the warehouse. He's calling me because they need to turn the screw on the outside of the building, but I'm not there. So um, I'm just going to... I'm just going to send him... I'm going to send him the uh, information for who's there. So give me one second. Um... I gotta go to my recent calls. Where's my recent calls? I'm just gonna send them the information for the uh, thing, so I'll send them a message. Yeah, I'm not at the warehouse today, so I'm gonna just send them this weekend. Oh, it doesn't have texting. Oh, shit. He doesn't... This guy... How do these guys have... They have a company phone, and they can't get text messages. Shit. So I'll just give him the number. I have to manually type it out then. 416. 474. How can you not get a... How are you not able to get SMS with a picture, man? People that are still, like, in the 1990s, man. Nine four two one. Mm. Maybe his phone can. Yes, it went through. Yeah, man. Yeah, they can't get pics, man. I was just uh, yeah. I just I had to send him the the number because um. Yeah. So I just sent him the number for uh, for the guy. Here it needs to help us find some rich Middle Eastern oil to fund these YouTube channels, man. Yeah. All right, guys, man. Uh, man, man, we're going to do another big stream. I'm going to do a big stream at North York Center. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. Have you ever tried uh, shagging someone in the warehouse? No, never. But one of my uh, co-workers did, and he got in trouble. He uh, had all of the liquids flying, and they got caught. They were in one of the, uh, the break rooms. And they were hiding there, and they were doing their business, and they got caught. My boss came in, and he, apparently he caught them when they were doing their thing. And then it, it, he saw all the liquid was flying. 
So, yeah, it, it happens, man. It happens. I've been there long enough. You hear enough stories, man. So, yeah. But anyways, guys, I gotta... I, I gotta do my thing. Mm -hmm. Did he get hit with the money shot? Yeah. <laughs> Top man. <laughs> But anyways, guys, man, man, we got a, I got a lot of people in my chat today, man. So thank you guys for supporting. We'll do it again later today, and uh, I will see you guys. You find the burden things. That's where they spend their money. Yeah, maybe perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps, man. But anyways, guys. Bang, bang, bang. It's time for me to do my work. I got things to do. It's even though it's my day off. I got I got things to do, man. So I can't stick around for long today. I think I'm going to cut it short here. I will go down. I got things to do. I will do those things. And then after that, I will uh, see you in North York Center. I will see you guys in uh, Union Station. Take care, guys. I got to go. Peace. And uh, see you on the next one.